This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So one of the most frequent questions I get from students when we're working with a vPython code is about this line right here, the rate command. What does the rate function do? What, what do I need to set the rate value to? What happens if I make rate too high? What happens if I make rate too low? Rate, 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 what do I do with this rate? So I wanted to make a video about this because the rate function doesn't actually contribute to the physics. It doesn't make the code any more or less accurate. All it really does is change the speed of the animation. So in order to help illustrate this, what I'd like to do in this video is look at the difference between the time in the simulation and the time in the real world. Because we are watching the simulation in our time, but the shape in the animation is experiencing a different time. So what we're going to do is keep track of two time values. We're going to keep track of time in the simulation, just like we've done before. This is the time that gets measured every time we update the loop with DT. So this is the time that starts at zero. We add a DT to it with each step. And that tells us how long in the simulation did it take the ball to move from negative 10 to positive 10. And then we're going to look at the time that we experience in the real world watching the simulation. That's the thing that gets measured by vPython's built-in clock function, which measures the time on the computer. It looks at the clock on the computer. We're going to store the start time. And then we'll calculate the real time by taking the ending time minus the start time. So the start time and real time, that's how much time we spend watching the simulation. The, the regular time variable that's there inside the loop, that's how long it takes the ball to go across the screen in the simulation. So let's press control two to run this and see what happens with this rate and DT combination. Uh, what we see is that the ball zips across the screen here, and I got an in-simulation time of 0.64 and a real-world time of 6.4. So you can see those don't have to be the same value, right? The time in the simulation went by a lot slower than the time in the real world, because it took us about six and a half seconds to watch. It only took 0.64 seconds for the sphere in the simulation. And the reason for that is because even though the number inside the rate function and the dt, the time step, even though they are measuring different things, the things that they measure are related to each other. Let me show you what this means. So the dt here, that is equal to the number of seconds in the simulation. So that is the amount of time in the simulation per frame of the animation. Right? That is how many seconds does the ball experience in each frame of the animation. In this case, the ball experiences 0.01 seconds per frame of the animation. On the other hand, the value inside the rate tells me the number of frames per second in the real world. So this is frames per real time. What you notice is that both of those values have the frame rate in them, right? This one has frames up here. This one has frames over here. What that means is if I multiply those two together, if I take DT and multiply it by the rate, if I take my DT value here, my rate value here, if I multiply those two numbers together, those frames are going to cancel and I'll have simply the time in the simulation divided by the time in the real world. So it's the simulation time divided by the real time. In other words, it's a factor that determines how much faster or slower the simulation is than the real world. Now, that doesn't change the physical accuracy of it. It just changes how fast we see the simulation unfold in front of our eyes. So you can actually use this to predict whether your simulation is going faster or slower than the real world. For example, in this case, we've got a DT of 0.01 and we've got a rate of 10. 
you multiply those two together, you get 0.1 as your factor between the simulation time and the real time. In other words, the simulation time should move at one tenth the speed of real world time. And that's exactly what we got, right? We got a simulation time of 0.64. We got a real world time of 6.4. So apart from a little bit of rounding error here, right? Because there's a little bit extra time that it takes to set up the, the loop and then conclude everything. It basically has that same ratio between them. And so I could make them equal to each other. If, for example, I make my rate, in this case, uh, 100, because I could take 100 times 0.01, I would get a rate of one, and then I would see the simulation move by in real time. So the simulation took 0.64 seconds, the real world time took 0.7, about the same thing as 0.64. Again, there's a little bit of extra time taken up uh, by the beginning and ending of the code there. But as a general rule, if you want your rate to kind of match your DT, you could just make your rate one divided by DT, right? And then I could have my rate be anything I want. I could have this be 10 to the minus four to get a nice smooth animation. And my rate uh, matches that accordingly. Now, of course, that was too fast for me to really tell what's going on, right? The real world time was way too slow on that. Uh, or excuse me, it was way too short on that. Uh, let's try making DT a little bit bigger. So my animation is going to be choppier now, but my real world time matches my simulation time. And of course you could make this ratio fixed to be anything you want. So let's suppose uh, I want my simulation time to be a hundred times faster than my real world time. I could do something like this. And of course there it's going to be uh, much too fast because my simulation time is, is really short there. Uh, let's suppose instead I were to slow down the actual acceleration of this thing. Yeah, there we go. I mean, in simulation time is two seconds, real world time is a fraction of a second. But you can relate those two uh, you know, but with using one over DT or, or some number over DT so that you've always got a consistent ratio between the simulation time and the real world time. So there is the answer. That is what the rate function does. That's all it does is controls the speed of the animation. It has no effect on the physics, no effect on the accuracy.